Hi everybody, welcome to O.C. Avery and welcome to episode one of Breeding British Birds series two. Now in this show, what we do is we document the progress of Breeding British Birds weekly throughout the whole breeding season from the beginning of April at the initial pairing, which is today's episode, to the end of the molt in late August. We have 19 different pairs this season of British birds across five different species including a few pairs of mules and hybrids so in store for today's episode we need to introduce you to the pairs let's take a look to begin with let's take a look at our lesser red poles we have eight pairs for this season we have three pairs of straight normals and we have a few pairs of combinations of different mutations including cobalt and cinnamon. So our three pairs of normals, we have some beautiful pairs here and a lovely pair here. We of course have to go with yellow to buff with these guys and they are some of the birds that we do focus on a bit more heavily in the exhibition side. So we need to make sure that they meet each other correctly with their colours, uh, you know their types uh, the markings the openness of the chest all sorts of different things we need to take into account when we're breeding these birds for the show bench so we have three pairs like i mentioned for this season of the normals and then what we have is a few pairs to do with cobalt or a few pairs to do with cinnamon you may recall for the longer term viewers of the channel that we have uh, cinnamons from a line which took second at the world show two years ago and our cobalt are a mix between a line which took first and took gold at the world show two years ago and various other lines to hopefully merge together and combine into nice birds so we have three pairs of normals we have a pair of cinnamon to cinnamon we have a pair of normal which is split cinnamon and split a gate to a cinnamon hen we have a pair of uh, cobalt to cobalt we have a pair of normal to cobalt and a pair of cinnamon to cobalt so eight pairs for this season we have our normals breeding straight and we have our mutations mixing so we're going to try and keep the two lines various you know the various lines separate and the idea of this is is that we can concentrate on the normals get them to a really good standard for the show bench especially when i uh, graduate into a champion uh, exhibitor in a few years time and then our mutations we will uh, work on them but we will keep them separate overall through many years of selectively breeding these birds and getting them comfortable to being more caged birds rather than as they were once wild birds many many generations ago these birds are now comfortable to live and breed in cages so what we have for our eight pairs of red poles this year are these cages we have uh, pvc plastic cages and we do have some wooden cages as well they measure about two and a half to three feet long per cage they're about 12 inches deep and about 14 inches high works nicely and we comfortably bred red poles in these cages last year which is all good and then what we have for our nest sites are coco wicker nest site liners we're going to put those onto these clip on the front nest pans we can have them like that and then they simply slot onto the front and that is your nest site now of course with them being british birds we do need cover for them well because it's only the start of april we don't have our nest sites in because red poles in the wild would breed from about may onwards so in the captivity you can expect slightly earlier but i'm not going to be letting them go down until at least mid-april so two weeks yet before we give these guys the nest sites and uh hopefully all goes well this season eight pairs it would be nice to get a good number of youngsters from each of them and hopefully get some good results come the end of the year so for keeping any british bird in captivity you have to prove that the bird was captive bred and that is by having a closed ring for red poles at least they take a size b ring you can get them from two places if you are in uh, the uk and that is the ioa which is the international ornithological association 
or the BBC, which is the British Bird Council. They are both uh, allowed to sell closed rings. Uh, they are metal closed rings and meet the um, find the charts and you'll be able to find out exactly what species you're breeding uh, and the size ring you need. But for our lesser red poles, it's a size B. For the 2022 breeding season, we are concentrating more on the green finches than we have in previous years. This year we have five pairs of green finches, all of which are breeding in our flights. You may have seen the video we made about almost a year ago, uh, originally building these flights. We designed them specifically to breed green finches in because green finches have slightly different requirements and they're more comfortably bred in flights than cages. So we've wrapped all the flights in here, relatively simple, relatively easy, and the green finches are happy. So we have fake Christmas tree on the fronts of the cage fronts. Uh, then we have our uh, nest sites at the back with a uh, fake Christmas tree around as well. And again, that is a wicker liner in there. I've had good results with those in the past. So I'm going to be doing the same again because I'm not changing it if we've had good results. So our five pairs, we have various lines combining here this year. Of course, as we're trying to breed a more competitive line for the show bench, we need to make sure that we're bringing in the right birds that are going to improve the birds that we've already got and we can ultimately build a better stud. Now we do want to make sure that of course we aren't breeding birds too close uh, and we're in relatedness so we, we've, uh, we've moved on a number of birds this year which although they were really good quality they were just too closely related and, and you know I can't do brother and sister pairings. Previously, we have bred green finches in cages and that has been successful. But I found that especially last year when we tried breeding them in cages that were about three foot uh, long, three foot high and 18 inches deep, they just weren't big enough for the green finches. They didn't keep themselves fit enough. And I felt that they didn't have the room they needed to get away from each other if there were any problems. So these flights are each two feet wide, they're four feet back and they're about just over six feet high. The height means that the birds can go down where the bath is, they're gonna bath in there, they're gonna get the water in there, and they have to fly up about four and a half feet to the perches. Flying upwards keeps the birds fit, they have to use more muscles to fly like that, rather than side to side. That's going to be the fitness almost covered for that. We do have, of course, two perches so they can fly sort of up and down diagonally a little bit, as you've seen, and then um, hopefully that should all go well. Well, we've had these guys as well, only paired up for a short uh, a short amount of time, only two days uh, at current. And I've seen them feeding each other, which is great, you know, considering that the birds haven't been paired up previously. It's the first time some of them have ever met each other and they're getting on just fine. And even some of the hens are starting to take nest material into their nest sites. So fingers crossed, we have a good start and a good year overall with the green finches. It would be nice to have a good year with them, give us plenty of young, but more importantly, give us good quality young for the show bench and moving forward. Of course, just do remember, when you're breeding British birds, you do need to make sure that you are closed ringing these guys. For green finches, they need a size ring E. Moving to our outdoor flights, we have, of course have these larger flights. These are much larger than what the green finches are in. They measure eight feet deep, they're about two feet wide, and they're about six and a half feet tall. We have various species in here. So to begin with, in this flight, we have our European whore finches. Now, this is the first time that the pair have been uh, in together, completely no barriers uh, since they were split in the uh, previous breeding season by the previous owner. Obviously, we've only had these guys uh, about a month to six weeks now. So this is the first time they've been together. We've had them in a, a triple, well, a double breeder. And what we've had is a wire divider down the, uh, between the two for the past week. Well, this is to get them used to each other because many people who are, uh, you know, experienced in the hobby and uh, have found out from research on hook paw finches is that they can be quite aggressive and can really cause each other problems. And you do need to make sure that the dominance is right in that the hen really needs to be the dominant bird in the pairing. Thankfully, that is the case for this pairing. However, the hen does seem to be a bit more further forward in condition, one and two, a little bit more aggressive than the cockbird. I have seen her having a, a go at the um, cockbird 
we'll see what happens and if it does get excessive and they do need splitting up we'll catch the cockbird out we'll put him in a cage for a short while and we'll leave the hen to do her own thing so we'll see what happens they're not an easy bird to breed by any means and just hopefully we have a good result with them they are almost soft bill like in the breeding season so they are going to need a lot of live food so we've got mealworms and we've got wax worms for them i've got hopefully some more things coming soon maybe this video maybe next video uh, of various other live foods for them which should hopefully be fine for the breeding season and do as well when they're rearing their youngsters for a hawfinch, their nest site is relatively simple. It's not much different to any greenfinch nest site. We've just got a wooden platform and we've got a big sort of large style canary nest pan in there for borders and Norwich canaries. We've got a cocoa uh, nest uh, liner in there in the center. We've got some cover around that nest of fake Christmas tree. And then we also have some various pine in there as more cover for them, more things to hide in, to chew out, to pull out and, and keep them active. Um, and they do take a ring size K. So these guys have got the largest uh, ring size of all the British finches. The size ring K is actually the same as what is needed for a song force. So just to give you an idea on how thick the legs are on these guys, they've got the same leg size, uh, you know, ring size as a thrush. So they are really quite powerful birds. So in the other outdoor flights, the two flights next to the hawfinches and the cage in here, we have our mule and hybrid pairs. We're doing three bullfinch mule hybrid pairs this year. So in the center flight, we have a European greenfinch cock in with a Siberian bullfinch hen. We bred both of these birds last season and they've been paired since October. I've seen some good signs from both of the birds coming into condition. The greenfinch cock has been singing and so so has the bullfinch hen but also they have been feeding each other they're both relatively difficult to uh, breed from the greenfinch cock is known for not readily pairing to other birds uh, and other species as well as it would with its own species i think we might have got past that point touch wood uh, as he has been feeding the bullfinch hen and a bullfinch is a bullfinch it's not an easy bird to breed anyway straight so hopefully they do get on well as a pair and hopefully we might breed some at green finch bullfinch hybrids this year fingers crossed we will and that pair will take a size e-ring we go for the size uh, ring of the largest parent in mules and hybrids the largest parent being the green finch is a size e the siberian bullfinch is a size d ring so you're going to go a size d for that and they have a uh, cocoa liner very very similar to the style nests as well uh, and that is in a chapel style of course they have the pine in there as well and fake christmas tree they're a good pair fingers crossed we get something from them this year in the next flight along we have our lesser red pole cross native bullfinch pair the difference between a siberian and native bullfinch for those who don't know we have covered in a video so there's a link up here somewhere to that but the main difference is size and song of the birds the native bullfinch is much smaller than the siberian bullfinch so we have a lesser red pole we bred here last year he's actually a normal who is potentially split for um brown pastels so we'll see if we produce any color variant hens but more importantly we want those normal birds and especially those normal cock birds because that is exactly what we need for the show bench and they look brilliant they are one of my overall favorite hybrids i think they look amazing so i hope we do breed some this year so ring size for these guys the lesser red poly is a b the native bullfinch is a d so it's a d size ring if we do produce any hybrids that is the size ring that they will need and they have the exact same nest site as the previous ones which is a cocoa liner and a chapel nest site. What I have done for that pair as well is added a grass liner in a um, wire canary nest pan, just to give them that option. If the bully hen's not a fan of the cocoa liner for whatever reason, she's got a grass liner, which will hopefully do the job for us. And let's just hope we get some full eggs. So down here in this cage, it's three feet long, it's three feet high, and it's about a foot deep. This is a pair of birds which have been 
quite excite, you know, quite exciting, quite interesting to watch, and and also something people are really interested in seeing what the results are. Hopefully, if we can breed something. So what we have in here is a white Norwich cock. Now it's a three-quarter Norwich. It's a clear white bird, and to my understanding, this is a yellow bird. It is a proven bird from uh, last year. And then we have that with a native bullfinch hen. The reason we're going for a white Norwich is because when you pair a white to a normal bird in canaries, essentially, they breed blue birds, and blue is basically a, a mix of greys. Well, it'll be interesting to see what will happen because to my understanding, no blue bullfinch mules have ever been bred. Now, I do believe there's also a, a percentage of normals that will be produced if this pair have more than one youngster or any youngsters at all. I just hope they do. Let's hope we do breed some. And it will be interesting to see what happens. So white, clear white Norwich canary cock with a native bullfinch hen. Let's see if we can breed some this year. Fingers crossed that we can. Um, it will be amazing if we can. I think they're going to be, a, a, I mean, a canary bullfinch anyway in normal is a beautiful bird and it's something amazing uh, to see on the show bench. And, and, and they are very difficult to breed. They're notoriously difficult to breed. So let's just hope we can even get a full egg. I'll take a full egg because they are so difficult and we can try the pair for a number of years. But if we can produce one this year, even a normal or a blue, that would be spectacular. So let's hope that we can. Now, again, nest site is no different to what we've already looked at. Cocoa or wicker liner, absolutely fine. That's what a bullfinch wants to nest in. A bullfinch will build its nest entirely out of cocoa fiber. So they're very easy to, to provide for in that sense. We have a, a fake Christmas tree around that. And I have taken an idea of having some uh, astroturf actually behind the nest site. I think it looks quite clean actually. And I think it'll be easier to wipe down, clean down, uh, and we'll see what the bully hen thinks of it. But hopefully we can breed some this year. Uh, and for this pair, the ring size, of course, you're always going to take the larger parent. So I think this pair will need a J ring. We've got the D size ring of a bullfinch and the J size ring of a Norwich. I think a J will be absolutely fine. So hopefully we'll produce some this year. Everyone, please keep your fingers crossed and let's hope we can do it this year. For those of you who have watched the channel over the past few months, you'll know that they aren't the only pairs that we have for this season. What we do have is a pair of twice and a pair of native bullfinches. Now, we haven't paired those really up yet. They are in their pairs, but they aren't in their breeding flights. And the reason being is that we're actually had a bit of an idea to change up one of the large flights and make it into a bit more of an outdoor bird room. So hopefully, relatively soon, I will have some new cages coming in and we will be breeding our bullfinches, our native bullfinches in those cages, as well as the twice. I think they should both get on just fine. They're both comfortable in cages. Uh, the native bullfinches are a young pair they've never bred before, so I think they'll be more comfortable. The twites have bred before, however, they have bred in flights. So we'll see what happens, but, and we can always make some move abouts and some changes if need be, but hopefully it works. And with those guys, we do have all our spare birds as well, remember. We don't just remove, uh, you know, sell everything else on after the winter that we're not going to be using for the breeding season. The reason being for that is that if we do that and then we come to needing a bird of quality, a bird from our line, a bird from a specific place, we've got that to tap into immediately as we need it. So this year what I've done is I've kept back another trio of red poles. I've kept a normal pied red pole cock. Uh, we've kept a normal red pole hen and a cinnamon cobalt red pole hen. We've got a over year cock, over year cinnamon cobalt hen and a current year normal hen. So if I need a red pole hen or red pole cock at any point, if one of them something goes wrong with, 
we've, we've got that bird immediately. We also have a spare green finch cock. He's not in uh, as good condition as I need him to be for the breeding season right now. So I've kept him separate. He's in his own cage and we're going to try and pick him up over the next few weeks, get him fit, get him healthy, uh, you know, in top condition and in breeding condition. And hopefully that should be fine. And then of course we do have various canaries as well. We've got our Norwich, which I've just recently paired up to get the pair sort of used to each other as we then put them in a breeding cage when we have this new sort of outdoor bird room sorted. And then we have our pairs of new colours, our yellow agate opals. We have another pair of Irish fancy canaries. We have a couple of spare canary hens. And then we've got our pied, uh, cinnamon pied greenfinch mule hen, which is not going to be any use this breeding season other than a feeder and a twite mule cock which again is going to be a feeder at most so we've got all these birds which the idea is having them out in this outdoor bird room uh, will keep them away from everything else we can use them if we need to as feeders uh, and they can just do as they please uh, for the whole breeding season until it comes for the show season uh, and of course we have all these birds to tap into if we need a feeder something unexpected we, we lose so we need something to pair the part the two um, and, and there's always so many things which you have to take into account so that's why we don't just completely sell everything else on as soon as it comes to breeding season, you need to keep your spares. It's really important. Because we've only just paired up the British, there's nothing too exciting to talk about in that we haven't got any nests really. The greenies are looking, they're taking material into their nests, but overall there, there's no serious efforts or attempts to, to build. And it's because they've only just been paired up. They've got to get used to their partner. They're in a bit of a new environment because they've not been in those flights before. And, and, and there's those things to take into account. But just because the British aren't breeding doesn't mean anything else is. And, and that's the canaries. The canaries um, we paired up last week. And if you've not seen that video, links up here somewhere. Um, and they're very interesting. We paired them up. We've had them paired a week. I put the nest sites in at the weekend. So from when I'm filming this, we put the nest sites in five days ago. And we have several pairs already built up. Now, when I'm filming this on a Wednesday, there is no eggs. However, I do anticipate there will be within probably the next 24 hours. Our pair of Raza Canaries has built up now. I think the egg is, is bound to come tomorrow. The um, crossbred feeders, so the uh, red factor based cock and the white and blue lizard fife hen thing, uh, they have built as well. We've got a pair of yellow dimorphics that is completely built up. The second pair of yellow dimorphics has began building. The pair of Portuguese have pretty much built up any an egg due any day. And then the last pair of Portuguese are, are looking. So out of our seven pairs of canaries that we've put together the nest sites in, five of which have built. The Irish haven't and one pair of Portuguese hasn't, but they're still looking. So hopefully next week we'll have news on the British more excitement hopefully coming with those guys and probably heartache as well we know what it's like something as simple as something laid an egg and it threw it out or or what have you um you know it's early on in the season but the canaries are, i'm pretty confident will have some eggs by next weekend's episode so Hopefully it all goes well, and if you want to see more of that, then do go and follow my Instagram. The link's in the description, and you'll get more regular updates on there. So there you have it, guys. That is Season 2, Episode 1 of Breeding British Birds. I hope you have enjoyed this episode. Obviously, not an awful lot has happened, but the idea is that we need to introduce you to the pairs and get you up to speed on exactly what's breeding this year. So if you do have any questions, anything you'd like to know about any of the pairs, anything at all, please drop me a message, Instagram, Facebook, drop me an email, or leave it in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And I'll do my best to advise everyone best I can from the experience I've had so far with breeding British birds and canaries. I'm sure next week's episode will be a lot more exciting. I'm sure that the green finches will have something going on. I'm fairly confident that one of the pairs outside may have something else exciting going on as well. And I think that the canaries may have got somewhere and really pushed forward. So we'll see how it all goes 
and just fingers crossed all goes well and i hope you all have a good breeding season as well so remember episode two we have an episode coming out every saturday morning at 9 a.m so next saturday episode two fingers crossed for a good one and i look forward to seeing how we get on over the next week so if you have enjoyed this episode and you would like to see more, please do subscribe down below so you don't miss any of these future episodes of Breeding British Birds and you don't miss any of the other videos we have. We do plenty of interviews with people, live streams every month. There's so much excitement on the channel and so much more to come. So please do follow along. If you have enjoyed this video, please do smash a like on it as well and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any more of my future content. And if you're a company and you would like to sponsor an episode of Breeding British Birds, drop me a message and we'll have a chat. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. I'll see you in the next one.